Jerusalem, the holy city. This is where our journey starts, but for many it represents the end of times. Throughout the years, the Mount of Olives has been a symbol of holiness. It's mentioned both in the Old and New Testaments. But this important feature in Jerusalem's landscape also signifies the Apocalypse. This is where we meet our tour guide, Jonathan Weiss. He seems thrilled to open the day with us, talking about death and the afterlife. So the motive of the apocalyptic prophecy is something that we meet in different traditions from different religions and we also know that there are different ways to calculate it and try to predict when it is about to take place. What else can you tell us about it? Why is it so important? Tradition and reference are mentioned in the three monotheistic religion. In Judaism it says that uh, many Gentiles and people are going to gather on Jerusalem and fight on it and God is going to stand over here on this mountain with one foot on this mountain and the other foot is going to stand right in front of us on the Temple Mount. The Mount of Olives will be torn into half. Half is going to be, is going to move, is going to shift to the south and the other half is going to shift to the north and water is going to come out of this mountain where it's going to run towards the Dead Sea on the east and on the west where we see the Temple Mount water is also going to run towards this way. In Christianity, what's called the Holy Week, the place where Jesus comes here with his disciples and goes into the temple, weeps on the temple and prophesies that there should not be a stone remain on the other one also occurs here. And in Islam, this is the day of judgment which would occur here and all mankind would cross towards the Temple Mount on a bridge that is sharp as a blade's knife and thin as a man's hair and the righteous are going to cross safely to the Temple Mount and the evil ones are going to fall down into this valley over here. Indeed, a sense of termination surrounds us when we continue our tour to the slopes of the mountain. Here we see a huge graveyard, perhaps the most significant burial site for Jews. In Jewish faith, we have 13 principles of faith where one of them is the resurrection of dead. And we believe that physically the place where it's going to start, it's going to begin over here, where we stand on the Mount of Olives. We believe that after the coming of the Messiah, all dead men are going to raise up from the ground and the proximity to the Temple Mount and to the Temple, uh, that's... What it's it going is. to dictate the time in which you'll be, you'll be brought back to life. So right. this is a prime location to be buried at. Um, how many graves are we seeing here? Well, what we can see above the ground in total are 100,000 graves that can be found. However, we have so many other layers of years years, after years, 3,000 years of history. That's right. That's why I would not exaggerate to say that perhaps we have in the history of Jerusalem, one million people who are buried over here in this total ground that we cannot even see. Just next to the Jewish cemetery, we find the Dominus Flavit Church. Outside the church is a necropolis with tombs from different eras. Some of them are believed to contain the remains of the first Jews who converted to Christianity during the first century. So over here on the mountain slope, this is a place where a sad scenery is believed to have taken place, where Jesus wept over the destruction of the city of Jerusalem, right? That's right. On the 30s of the first century, the Jewish society is being divided by many different political powers and parties. When Jesus arrived into the city, he prophesied on the destruction of the temple, which would happen 40 years after, and said that there shall not be a stone remain on the other one. Traditionally, it is said that this is the exact place where this thing happened, where the church of Dominus Flavit is built. Yeah, the sanctuary of the Dominus Flavit. Dominus Flavit means? Master of wit. With so many scenes of sorrow, it's not surprising that the Mount of Olives is associated with the apocalypse, but it's also not the only site related to it. A few hours north of here is Tel Megiddo, also linked to the Book of Revelation as a possible site of the Armageddon, the end of times. Our next destination is a site holy to the Christian community. This is where Virgin Mary, the mother of Jesus, is believed to be buried. However, this site does not appear in the New Testament. There are other locations, including one in Turkey, where she is believed to be buried. And Jonathan, why is she believed to be buried here? Well, according to the Catholics and the Orthodox, Virgin Mary have never died. Sinners die. Virgin Mary is considered pure, and therefore she dormants. She went to sleep eternally in, on Mount Zion. And then she was taken here to Joseph at Valley between Mount of Olives and the Temple Mount, and that's the place where she was buried. Her son took her up to the heavens, and since we have many tombs here from the first century, that's where we recognize that this is 
her place. On the fourth century, her tomb was divided from the rest, and traditionally ever since then, this is the tomb, at least according to the Orthodox, of Virgin Mary. This came out now from uh, the agony tomb, the place where, according to tradition, the disciples have stayed here during the Holy Week, and Jesus also. This is the place where Judas also frames Jesus and gives him a kiss. There are many tombs from the first century, and therefore, traditionally at least, this is the place where all those events have occurred, including the tomb of Virgin Mary. We are on the drainage divide uh, where many empires came to Jerusalem. This is the same road where Jesus comes from the Sea of Galilee throughout the Judean desert and ascending Jerusalem. That's the place where the people of Jerusalem are greeting Jesus with palms, calling Osana. This is the place where many prophets like Jeremiah are coming also into the city. But this city also has a very bright future based on prophecies like the prophet of Isaiah, who calls this place the house of prayer of all, for all nations. The mountain of the Lord. This is what Isaiah, son of Amoz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations will not take up swords against nations, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord.